morning, everyone. Uh, formally declare open this submissions committee meeting of the Collar Gotway Shire on the 14th of June 2023. Almighty God, we seek your blessing and guidance in our deliberations on behalf of the people of the Collar Gotway Shire. Enable this council's decisions to be those that contribute to the true welfare and betterment of our community. Amen. I'd like to start this afternoon by acknowledging the traditional custodians and lawmakers of this land, their elders past and present, and welcome any descendants here today. Please be advised that this submissions committee meeting is recorded and live streamed, with the exception of confidential matters. This includes the public participation sections of meetings. The live stream recording of this afternoon's meeting will be available on the website as soon as practicable. By participating in open committee meetings, individuals consent to the use and disclosure of the information they share at the meeting, including any personal and or sensitive information. The purpose of this submissions committee meeting is to hear persons who indicated they wish to speak in support of their written submissions to the 2023-2024 draft budget and proposed fees and charges. Uh, note all councillors uh, present. Please uh, be aware that we have Councillor Max Arnott and Councillor Graham Coston joining us online. Uh, gentlemen, I take it you can hear us all right? Yes, yes Colin, thank, uh, you. thank you. Are there any declarations of conflict of interest, please? No declarations. Um, councillors, I propose that we move to confirm the minutes of the submissions committee meeting held on Wednesday the 7th of June 2023. Uh, moved by Councillor Finnegan, is that to be seconded? Thanks, Councillor Hanson. Is to be opposed? Councillors, all those in favour? Thank you. That uh, matter is carried 7 0. Verbal submissions from those applicants and objectors who are confirmed in writing that they wish to speak to their submissions will be heard prior to the consideration of the agenda item. A limit of five minutes will apply to each submitter. Item 8.1, 2023-24 draft budget and proposed fees and charges. The purpose of this item is to hear from submitters who have requested to speak in support of their submissions and to receive written submissions to the 2023-2024 draft budget, including 2023-24 uh, fees and charges. I have a list of uh, seven people um, who uh, have requested to be heard in support of their uh, submission. Uh, the first uh, submitter we'd like to hear from is uh, representative of the LV Football Nepal Club Incorporated. Thank you very much. Um, and just thank you to everyone bit small. Thank you everyone uh, just for allowing us to um, have this opportunity to present to you for our um, submission in the budget. Uh, we are looking for some extra funding um, in regards to upgrading and resurfacing our netball courts at the LV Football and Netball Club. Uh, we have applied for some grants um, through Axiona which were unsuccessful and also through your community grants we applied for a $10,000 grant. Uh, currently, the quote to upgrade the works is um, at $44,000, um, $44,400, um, which we're a little bit short. The club would also um, like to contribute to this amount, um, you know, to get some skin in the game, so as we um, are contributing as well. Uh, but the the netball courts have got to a stage where they're getting unsafe and they need to be upgraded before they become in a state of disrepair and they want, um, you know, it will be a greater cost to, um, you know, to upgrade these facilities if we let them go into the future. Uh, I am aware that other um, local sporting clubs have had um, some funding um, allocated, you know, to them to do a similar project with resurfacing of their netball courts, but just like um, in a show of good faith, we would, you know, be willing um, 
to you know we're putting the ten thousand um, dollar amount from our own um, funds to um, try and get this project up and running um, as soon as we could, so as it can. Uh, get the project moving forward before we degenerate our um, facility any further um, and it can move forward. Thanks, Mr McLennan. Do councillors have any questions? No worries. Thanks, Luke. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, somebody would like to hear from, uh, Jason Schramm. Uh, thanks, Mayor and Councillors. Um, as I put in three submissions, I'll just roll it in to one if we're going to have extra time rather than taking up five minutes per submission. Yeah, that sounds fine. Um, might be able to get it done in ten. Nine or eleven, yeah. Um, firstly, the first submission was on the upgrades to the Lake uh, Coal Lake Foreshore and the power. Um, you know, the Council passed a uh, Lake Foreshore master plan probably over 10 years ago now and it was identified for upgrades down there and nothing um, has come of it in uh, that whole time. We've seen the great event that uh, Mix FM and Red Door put on for Christmas and, and other events down there but it's certainly lacking in power and it would just add um, to more outdoor activities that we could have down there. Uh, so I'd like to see that funded in the budget. Um, Surely we can fund a few of these things that we don't have to rely on state and federal grants for. Um, after all, we pay over $31 million in rates. Um, we shouldn't just pass master plans and hope that the state and feds uh, kick in to get them done. Uh, the other submission I had in was about the Meredith Park upgrades. Uh, you know, it was a council resolution to, to uh, investigate different options out there. Um, someone asked a question a few months ago of council, what does it cost? About $100,000 to look after Meredith Park. Um, that report was meant to be back at council in uh, 2021. It's 2023 and still not done. Um, it could be self-sufficient, $10 a head. Uh, whatever options you come up with down there could save money. And I think um, um, I'd like to see that if it, if it requires any money to be budgeted for so it can be done uh, next financial year. Uh, the other submission was about um, the man management reduction at the Shire to save costs on employee costs. Uh, at the start of the of the budget, the CEO statement saying that um, you know, we're all under pressure, household pressure and cost of living crisis and council's not immune from it. Um, I beg to differ that it's not immune from it. The only uh, things that are cut in the budget are uh, asset renewal, uh, materials and services are all slashed, but employee costs are the only thing to continually funded with growth. Uh, out of $31 million or more of rates collected, an average of $2,000 per household, over $24 million is, is spent in employee costs, and uh, that's over 77% of our rate money goes in just feeding this organisation. There doesn't seem to be any attempt in the budget whatsoever to get these uh, extraordinary costs under control. I think there's uh, far too many levels of management. There's too many links in the chain. Uh, you could quite easily remove uh, some of the, those um, links or levels of management, whether it be uh, from general managers to senior managers or the next level of managers or the management below that. And you would quite easily save a million dollars a year. You could save a million dollars in this budget quite easily. If you break it down into that $2,000 per household, there's over about 170 households, struggling households, households that have to pay their rates, that uh, struggle to send their kids to school, put food on the table, pay the mortgage. About 170 of those households pay the CEO's wages. If you add the three general managers, over 500 households that struggle to come up with their rates and pay every, everything else in the cost of living goes to the top tier, the four top managers at the Shire. Then you've got senior management and the cost of all the cars and the fuel cards and everything like that that is on top of it, that there just doesn't seem to be an attempt in this budget to get that the biggest expense under control. And I'm not talking about uh, 
laying off you know, workers for the sake of it. Um, we, the guys that grade the roads and fill the potholes and keep the grass mown and answer the, the uh, phones at the front desk, um, you know, they're, they're, they're needed here. But they're our lowest paid, drive their own cars, pay for their own fuel and bring their own lunch. The uh, upper management here drive a ratepayer funded car, ratepayer funded fuel, services and you know at why because local governments here and across the state just feel entitled to it's um if you can break it down and think about those struggling families every two thousand dollars is a household that pays to try and improve their shire but they also chip in here we we all mow our nature strips to save money from rates we all um you know a lot of volunteers that get things done here, pay, um, uh, help charities out when people are uh, struggling. We all chip in in the community because we want to see it improved. But the CEO's asked for our help in getting the budget under control. We need to see a budget for the ratepayers and not just built around maintaining the staff levels here. The, um, the Blue Water uh, increase of 10% is, is ludicrous. Uh, it runs at a million dollar loss. A few years ago it was running at about a $300,000 a year loss. Things obviously not getting managed properly. Um, and to have ratepayers slugged again at a 10% increase is, um, is just ludicrous when we should be encouraging people to, to get out and get fit. At the same time, this organisation offers its employees a 20% discount on memberships at the cost of the ratepayer again. Um, the, you know, you, you read that uh, people want a BMX track or a pump track or a bike track in town. It's what the community wants, but we can't find $10,000 for a feasibility study. The councillors need to take some responsibility too. Do you need to spend $15,000 on joining a, a climate alliance? Do you need to spend $50,000 on staying signed up to G21, which is defunct. Geelong's pulled out. $2.4 million is spent on our memberships and subscriptions. Um, I think the place could run a lot more efficiently. If I had half an hour, I could go through every line item of the budget and probably save you several million dollars, but I don't. So I well, thanks for your time again. Um, if you could find some money to fund the upgrades to Bait Colac, been banging on about that myself for six years now, putting in submissions for that. Uh, I was told it was about $50,000 or 25 struggling households. Uh, if you could do that, find some $10,000 for a bike track and get on with the Meredith Park thing. And um, I doubt whether you'll make any changes to the employee cost because this budget is done for staff and not the rate payer. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Sram. Are you happy to take questions if we have any? Sure. Uh, councillors, do we have any questions of Mr. Shroom? No, apparently not. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Pilly for the Illuminati Tennis Club. James Judd Kolek. Uh, just, just FG for the increase uh, in interest. Mr. Judd, just. Uh, Hold it there for a minute. I did ask for someone from the um, Illuminati Tennis Club if they were going to be here for a submission. No, there's nobody here. Um, Mr Judd, go ahead. If due to the increase in the interest rates, this results in a reduction in funds on, the, on a regular basis by council, does the Colac Otway Shire Council have available a guaranteed line of credit that will enable it to pay on time, all its financial obligations. That's all I have to say. Thanks, Mr Judd. Uh, do we have um, the Apollo Bay Arts Inc. by video conference? Yeah, um, Joe's, um, yeah, Joe's there, I think. Uh, yes, I am. Hello. Can I? Oh, no, we're not allowed to have the camera. Oh, no, yeah, so I've been told not to turn the camera on. That's correct. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Uh, all righty. Um, 
Uh, thanks very much for allowing us to make a short verbal submission to this committee and also to join remotely uh, from the beautiful township of Apollo Bay. Um, I'm here with, um, with two colleagues uh, on the committee as well. Uh, I'm just speaking though as representative. So together we represent Apollo Bay Arts Inc, which is a not-for-profit group um, with over 300 members and many, many, many volunteers who have a passion for all kinds of art. Um, we enhance the quality of life for Apollo Bay and district residents through organising performances, theatre, annual art shows, regular art exhibitions, writing festivals, pottery workshops and groups, access to printmaking and workshops, life drawing and much more. We also intersect with other arts-based economic activities in the town, such as the, the Winter Annual Winter Wild Festival, promoting all art forms to assist local artists to bring art, artistic performances to Apollo Bay. Arts Inc is 38 years old, formed in 1985 and incorporated in 1994. <clears throat> we are an umbrella for WordFest, the annual art show, the art gallery and the mechanics hall in a re rented space, the pottery group and the development lab. The annual art show is uh, in its 47th year and is a well-known visitor attraction running over 10 days, including the busy Easter break. This brings economic benefit to the town as well as supporting income for local artists. This year, our show attracted over 1,600 visitors. Arts Inc have previously requested Shire support for a dedicated maker space in 2017 and 2019. This will be our third submission for your support to create a dedicated space for use by Arts Inc members. A dedicated space would not only provide workshop and studio space, but also much needed storage space and a shared office space that would allow our volunteers to cross-fertilise ideas and manage the administration of the many areas that we cover. Importantly, the premises we are proposing for a dedicated makerspace would also give the successful Apollo Bay Art Show safe and secure storage for the equipment necessary to stage the show. This is currently stored in a shed in the recreation reserve that is not at all secure from the weather. Along the Great Ocean Road from Geelong to Warrnambool, there are dedicated makerspaces in Anglesey, Torquay, Deans Marsh and Warrnambool. The Colac Makerspace and Forest Studio have had shire support for a dedicated makerspace for a number of years. They support a dedicated space for Apollo Bay and agree that many artists find the travel up the mountain too hard for us to consider joining in in Colac or in Forest. We feel Apollo Bay would benefit from the potential economic and social connectedness benefits of a dedicated makerspace and hope that the Shire will give consideration to this submission for use of the Apollo Bay Preschool and an opportunity to develop a business plan to make, um, to make this sustainable. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak today. Thanks for joining us, Joe. Um, representatives from the Climate Action Team, I have the name of David Brown here, but that you're representing him? Yes. Thanks, Marina. Yes, so I'm Marina Lewis from the Climate Action Team. Um, thank you, Mayor, councillors and staff. Good afternoon to you all. So the draft budget is a disappointment to the Colac Otway community watching and waiting for real council action on the climate crisis. It's concerning that the draft budget release preceded the long awaited draft climate change action plan release. Despite the stated recognition of the urgency for real action in the climate change action plan and despite council's recent acknowledgement of the climate emergency impacting our community and the need for urgent action, this urgency is not reflected in the proposed budget. Some actions are apparently funded, but many significant ones are not. Whilst it's good to see that a tree planting program has been allocated $60,000 to increase urban cooling and carbon drawdown sequestration, the main points I wish to make are that this lack of urgency leaves council and community vulnerable to risk and that taking action early will actually save money. For example, with regard to risk, the following actions from the draft climate change action plan directly relate to council's risk and should be clearly allocated funding in this budget as a matter of priority. Action 5.2, identify areas and ecosystems vulnerable to flooding, inundation, erosion and landslips and investigate monitoring and adaptation options. 
and Action 5.7 build on our existing bushfire prevention, relief and recovery programs by developing a bushfire prevention action plan in line with the Bowen Southwest Regional Strategic Bushfire Management Plan. Speaking of risk and bushfires, a glaring omission in both the draft budget and the draft climate change action plan is the lack of mention of heat refuges for residents required to evacuate their homes on code red or catastrophic days. There is a real risk for the community and possibly for Shire in legal consequences with residents in rural areas as well as vulnerable residents in townships having nowhere to take refuge on days when directed by authorities to leave home. This is not about fire safe places but away from home refuges on high code days. It is, dangerous enough without, uh, it is dangerous enough having people forced to find their own refuge on such days which may just be in public spaces open to the heat and the weather like the botanic gardens, cafes may be closed, but worst case may be people who do not leave because there is no suitable place for them and their domestic animals. Some suitable sites might be Copac, the library, the old civic hardware um, repurposed site, um, other council facilities. Addressing this increasingly important issue will save both money and lives. Another glaring omission in the budget draft is that no funds have been allocated to direct emissions reduction. Climate barely rates a mention. And although the words emissions or emissions reduction are mentioned 67 times in the draft climate change action plan, there is zero mention in this document. With regard to my second point, saving money, Council's own experience and extensive evidence suggests the following actions from the draft climate change action plan will save Council money in the long term and reduce emissions and should be clearly allocated funding in this budget. Action 1.1, pursue new opportunities and clean technologies to reduce Council's operational emissions. Action 1.6, develop a fleet transition plan and transition Council's operational fleet and equipment to zero emissions vehicles. Action 2.8, continue implementing energy efficiency and emissions reduction programs in Council-owned and operated facilities, services and operations. Council is, I believe, currently debt-free. We suggest the proactive, future-oriented approach could be taken with Council taking out loans for strong community outcomes. These would be serviced over time via rates, etc. For example, in relation to Action 2.8, careful borrowing would enable Council to get away from gas, especially at Blue Water, which accounts for the highest of your emissions at 13%. This would enable a year-by-year -year reduction with council saving money, reducing emissions whilst, um, whilst bringing down emissions. Um, so similarly, council could borrow to begin a thorough transitioning of the Shire fleet to renewable energy-powered vehicles as per Action 1.6 with a certain amount allocated year-by-year. Year. Or funds could be sourced to support community household mitigation via grants for electrification, such as via heat pumps. The offset fund, for example, could be more usefully used to begin any of the above processes, enabling council to save money, address risk and bring down emissions. Win, win, win. Not factoring in proactive funding to address the climate crisis may prove fiscally and socially and environmentally improvident in the long term. I thank you for your time today. Thanks, Marina. Any questions for Marina from councillors? No, thank you. Uh, Mr Barrett, please. Sorry, uh, Lee. Was there a question from one of the councillors online? Oh, sorry, Joe. Uh, Hello. Yeah. It's Joe Dunsby with you. I'm just, um, we just sure. noticed that at the end of our submission for arts income, uh, you didn't actually ask if anybody wanted to ask us any questions. Yeah. So we are happy to answer. Yeah. You no, good point, Joe. Can you stay online? I'll, I'll come back to yeah. that. Yep. Yeah. Mr. Barrett. Yeah, sorry, Councillor Anderson says you might want to go, Joe. Sorry, Lee. Can um, councillors, are there any questions for Joe Dunsmere in relation to the Polar Bay Arts Group submission? No, thank you. Thanks, Joe. Thanks very much. Thank you. Sorry, Lee. We'll try the third time. Um, um, 
Uh, Mr. Mayor, the CEO says in her executive summary that the dilemma that Council finds itself in, financial challenges, can only be solved with the help of the community. $30 million in rates with a 3.5% increase is not enough. Why do you get any help or sympathy from the community when you constantly upset them, borne out by your own su uh, survey approval rating of 53%? You can assure the CEO, Mr Mayor, that she will not get any help from the community. It looks as though the Shire Corporation will fail the challenge that everyone else in their workaday lives has to meet. Successful people often say they are not that smart, but surround themselves with smart people. The Shire Corporation is sounded by successful businesses of all sizes that all need to have approval ratings of nearly 100%. There's no op other option for them. Why haven't you learned from them? In my written submission, I have made my views about the Gender Equality Action Plan very clear. You said there was no risk or cost, both not true. It is the greatest challenge to local government since amalgamation 30 years ago. The Shire Corporation is not an agent for social or political change, wherein, whether it be through the United Nations or the state government. To quote Miriam Cates, a British Member of Parliament, there is nothing more destabilising to society than to dismantle the legal, social and cultural guardrails that protect women and children by pretending that people can change sex and allowing that pretense to creep into law. And I'll add to that, upholding the dignity of men and manhood that has been under attack for at least 40 years. Sorry. Keep, keep going. I was trying to look for your submission, but Councillor Hanson's helped me out there. The LGBTIQA plus political movement is pure communist Marxist socialism the antithesis of our Judeo-Christian democracy under the rule of law. And I make the point that all in this room have been blessed by it. Who here is derelict, seriously lacking, homeless? We are all reasonably prosperous. At the last Anzac Day, Dawn Service in Colac estimate about 500 people came to pay their respects to those who left our community to defend the Australian way of life. The Gender Equality Action Plan is a declaration of war against these values. It comes from the same source as drag queens or male prostitutes entertaining toddlers in uh, our parliament. Sorry, parliament. Mr Barrow. Um, I'm, I'm uncomfortable with, with uh, some of this. We're talking about the budget. That's right, it's the budget. We're, we're not talking about uh, politics. What was the lady talking about the climate for? The, 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 gender, the, um, the draft budget has all the number of males, fields, males, females, and self-appointed gender. Yeah, a, a, as a figure, do you have a submission in relation, further submission in relation to the budget, uh, I've, rather I've than got, political I've got statements? My submission here. Please. What's that? Ra rather than political statements, can you address the budget, please? I'll, I'll send this to you, Mr. Neer. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. Did uh, anyone have any questions? More just a statement for the record, Mr. Mann. No, but, uh, we, we won't. No, no, we won't. just that I'm not a socialist or a Marxist. I'd Thank hate you. to be put well, into such company. Well, no, no one was singled out by what Mr Barrett said. He made his statement and he's, um, he's sat down. Thank you. That concludes the um, submissions. Councillors, do we have any questions of officers? No questions. Oh, sorry, Councillor Hart. Yeah, man. My question, um, which I don't expect a, I don't expect a detailed answer on today, but my question through you, Mayor, would be whether the uh, budget, the draft budget, or the report, will explain the linkage between employee costs and user fees, and how um, 
I mean, they, they appear at different parts of the budget, but my understanding is that some of the employee costs are funded by user fees, and I don't know that that's entirely e easily transparent as opposed to rates. So, if, I mean, for example, we get grants for to provide certain aged care services, and then we pay salaries for certain people that provide those services. So I'm not expecting the detail now, no. but my question no. is whether the it, the uh, budget report, when that's considered, will be a bit more um, clear on that linkage. Um, so through the Mayor, I'm happy to provide just a general response to that and to guide um, councils and communities where you might find some helpful information in the document. And so section two uh, is where we try and help uh, create the understanding of the, the various service and functions of council and in section two, um, for each general type of service, so uh, aged care might be one, um, recreation might be another, roads or civil infrastructure is another, you'll find in there an indicative total expenditure and total revenue, okay? Um, and so the net of those is effectively what council needs to contribute uh, through rates. So the revenue are operating grants or user fees. So that helps probably just at a service level give an indication about where user fees start to contribute to a, um, the direct costs of that service, okay? Those expenditures aren't broken down into uh, employees and materials and services in that area, but I think most people will be able to understand from the nature of the service which ones are probably more uh, dominant in the employee space and aged care and disability would be mostly about people rather than infrastructure. And so the revenue is also about Commonwealth grants and user fees, for example. So there is some high-level information in the document in that sense. Um, but as a general rule, there is no direct relationship at a high level between employee costs and particular revenue streams other than services like aged care. So I only have a general... It's only in a general sense. But we can take, take the feedback on board and see if there's a way to maybe help provide some clarity. Any other questions? Councillors, the officers have provided a recommendation with the report for our consideration. Does any councillor wish to move a motion in relation to this matter? Thanks, Councillor Hanson. Is there a seconder? Thanks, Councillor Finnegan. Is to be opposed? Councillor Hanson. Um, I'd like to start by thanking all the people who have made, um, who have read the draft budget. Um, and who have made submissions, uh, both written and verbal. Um, I think there's um, a number of things that, um, you know, are, are worth following up um, after the submissions um, meeting. Um, I, think it's, I think it's fantastic that so many people have taken an interest in the budget and have taken the time um, to make a submission. And from those submissions and, and the people that have spoken tonight, I think you really get... Um, you certainly get an understanding of the breadth of the things that people are interested in the community. Um, so I certainly, um, uh, you know, endorse the motion um, that we um, uh, thank everybody for their submissions. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Hanson. Councillor Finnegan. Yeah, I'd like to uh, echo Councillor Hanson's words there, and I'd also like to say. Uh, yes, we do thank submitters for their submissions. We may not always uh, may not always agree with what's being said, but we're more than happy to hear it. And I would encourage anyone who uh, has certain views on uh, the backgrounds of certain councillors and the like to reach out and talk to us personally. Our phone numbers are public, so uh, there you go. Thank you. Any other councillor Hart? Uh, thanks, Mayor. I'd join with the comments in terms of the uh, s appreciation of the people who've made submissions to the budget. And I, I think it was, um, it's important to see that these submissions calling for a particular uh, project or what have you to be funded, that we don't lose sight of that, whether it's through the budget, whether it's through existing maintenance budgets, and I know there was a particular submission in terms of a bridge and that there's follow-up on that 
Um, people quite reasonably raise matters of concern and matters that they need to see need to be fixed in the budget process. And I've been uh, pleased this year that uh, a particular issue was raised about a bridge and that that issue is being looked at by the council, notwithstanding that it's also a budget submission. And uh, I understand there'll be a response on that particular matter, as there will be with all submissions. Thanks, me. Thanks, Councillor Hart. Councillor Coston. Thank you, Mayor. Have you, uh, can you hear me? We can, thank you. Hello. Okay. Um, uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Hanson, Finnegan, and Hart. Um, I can only echo what you said. It's pleasing to see so many submissions um, to our budget and uh, pleasing to see such good quality submissions. And it does give us um, reason, does give us feedback from what the community is thinking. And th there are, as Councillor Hart said, there are a number of uh, suggestions or proposals in there that may not be related to this budget, but they should be looked at in the longer term as well. And um, we'll be taking into due consideration all the submissions in due course. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Coston. Councillor Arnott. Thanks for the opportunity, Mayor. Look, I'll just again echo the comments as uh, Councillor Coston has just said of all the other councillors to date. And I'd just like to point out that we're actually, um, Councillor Coston myself, are speaking to you from Canberra. We're up here as representatives of the Shire. Uh, along with many other shires from it without the, throughout the nation of Australia. And what's become a common theme here is the challenges to councils around budgets and sustainability, rate caps and how that affects people. But one of the big key takes away from today in relation to this and some of the submissions, and I really thank the people for their submissions, but the greatest value that the shire has is the employees that we, that we have on our staff, our staff who provide our services, our staff who actually do the things like repairing the roads, who actually are there to welcome you when you come in, and those staff who actually do the admin work in the background to make sure that all those other staff have got their salary and wages met, that you have the executive who do the, the larger degree of planning to make sure that all that occurs. So, it is our staff which is our most important asset. It's not their graders, it's not our, our trucks or anything like that. They're all important, but our staff is our most important thing. And that's something that I think that um, we can hopefully support through this budget process and bring to the forward for our community. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Arnott. Any other councillor? Thanks. Councillors now put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? Thanks, councillors. That motion is carried 7-0. Thank you. That concludes today's submissions hearing.